this, in order to achieve this objective of the Hindutva Rashtra, all the independent institutions and authorities created by the Indian constitution are under grave attack. Beginning from the parliament itself, when Governor T.K. Rangarajan and I were in parliament together, we could debate, discuss many of the issues and the laws when they were made. Today, there is no discussion. The force of group majority, it is the tyranny of the majority that has reduced parliament into not even a debating society, but just a rubber stamp of the executive or the government. Likewise, the Supreme Court, the judiciary, another pillar of our constitution. For nearly three years now, the challenges to the abrogation of Article 370, the dissolution of the state of Jammu and Kashmir, the challenges to the constitutional validity of the Citizenship Amendment Act, the challenges to the legalization of political corruption through the electoral bonds. All these cases continue to remain pending, not heard before the Supreme Court for the last three years. Likewise, you have the functioning of the Election Commission that is coming under increasing question marks that even the code of conduct that they prescribe, even violations of that are not acted upon. And then you have the Enforcement Directorate, the, the CBI, which function as the political arms of this government. So the net result is the undermining of the four fundamental principles or the foundational pillars of our constitution. That is the economic sovereignty of India, secular democracy, social justice, and very importantly, federalism or the relations between the Union government and the states. All these four foundational pillars are under assault today. So this is the gravest challenge for India's constitutional order, which will, we will have to rise to defend. After all that has been sacrificed during the freedom struggle and these 75 years, today we are at the brink of a government that is proceeding to destroy these very foundations which cannot be permitted. And that is why the CPI has very, very strongly and consistently, it's always been, but now strongly, come forward giving the slogan to the people of India that we have to save India today so that we can change India for the better in the future and to move towards socialism in the future. For that we have to save India today and that is the priority when people should all unite and rally. What I was speaking about is the four foundational pillars, federalism. Today the rights of the states are being assaulted very, very severely. We must recollect and remember the first article, Article 1 of the Indian Constitution. Article, the, article 1. Article 1 of the Indian Constitution says, India, that is Bharat, is a union of states, unquote. That is the definition of India. Without states, there is no union government. Without states, there is no India, that is Bharat. But this recognition of the states, the rights of the linguistic states, of that language, of that culture, of that traditions, each one of them were equally respected when the constitution was drafted and implemented these seven decades with many limitations and many violations. That is a different point. But today they want to destroy federalism altogether in order to establish a unitary state structure, which is necessary for converting the secular democratic republic into a fascist state in the Twaraj. That is why today they contest the fact that they are the union government. They say they are the central government and the states are only administrative units. No, every state with their language, their pride, their history, their culture and their pride in their culture, they will have to stand up to assert that India is a union of equality between these various linguistic groups, between the various diversities that we have, between the various nationalities that we have.
and that cannot be violated and that is a very important element of our struggle today. Yet during these four years, since the last uh, state conference of the Donald Trump Party Congress, there have been many, many popular struggles and people struggles and many big struggles and mighty struggles. You had the countrywide resistance to the imposition of the Citizenship Amendment Act. You had the historic farmer struggle that finally made an obstinate Prime Minister to bend backwards and repeal the agri laws. You had the trade union struggles and only yesterday, the fourth of the two days All India strikes, in the last four years, the fourth All India strike against these policies of loot of our country's national assets, privatization for the rights of the working people and the working class. That, that has happened last two days. And you had the growing unity of our uh, agricultural sector, farmers, agricultural labor, and the working uh, people, the working class, the trade unions. All these big struggles have been going on. But yet, when elections come, the BJP continues to maintain a certain edge and gain victories. Why? Why is this popular discontent among the people of the immense agonies that has been imposed by this government, by their policies? Their lives are being destroyed. Prices of petrol now have gone up seven times in the last eight days. And they'll continue to go down. And they only give excuses saying Ukraine war, that's why it's happening. But the fact is for the last seven years, eight years, Lakhs of crores of rupees have been collected due to increased central taxes on petroleum products, which they are refusing to withdraw. If they withdraw that, the price of petrol and diesel will fall at least by 35 rupees per litre. But they are making money at the expense of the people, yet in elections they keep getting the support. Why? That must be properly pinpointed and that must be defeated.